everyone. Welcome to episode six of the Tea for All show. Yvette, has 2019 been your year of tech? It has. It continues to be. 2020, we may have a new slogan, but the sentiment will be the same, guys. We're going to continue on this path. I'm still learning, you're still learning, and we're hoping to see even more of you next year. If you're not learning, you're not having fun, and we're going to have one amazing episode ready for you. Let's get started. What have we got today, Joe? So we have an amazing story of tech inspiration from when we were out at Williama High School with an awesome student, Cal. We're going to take a look in the lab with our interns checking out a new product you might love. We'll explore one teacher's journey with technology in a remote school. And I go on an adventure with students at the Autonomous Vehicle Summit. Mm, anyone behind the wheels? Oh! See what I did there? <laughs> So let's jump aboard the T4L Express. Toot toot. Our first scheduled stop today is in the lab with our interns. Take a look at what they're exploring. Hi everyone, it's Yvette here in the lab. We're exploring a great product today, the Annoyatron. And with me... I'm Ariad in Year 9. And I'm Alex in Year 10. Our interns have been busy working with us at the T4L lab this year, checking out new products, finding out about the department, and they're part of a program at Liverpool Boys High School called Big Picture. Alex, tell us a little bit more about Big Picture. Big Picture, in a nutshell, is where you get to focus on your own passion instead of doing mainstream schooling. So it's quite different to going to normal classes and it allows you to work on a project that you want to do. What is your passion? My passion is IT. And Ariane, what are you working on this year? My passion is game development. Great, so we're in the right place now. Let's look at Annoyatron. Today, we're uncovering this product, this very innocuous product, the Annoyatron. Arian, how does this thing work? It annoys friends and family, and this device can be coded on an app called Arduino, which you can download from the Microsoft Store. And you can code it to make annoying sounds and also flashing lights. Okay, have you had success with annoying people with this product? Yes, I have, <laughs> especially my teacher. So how do you guys get going with this product? How do you start? And you need to download the Arduino IDE software from Arduino's website. Okay, and that's how you get coding? Yes, and then once you've installed it, you uh, plug the Annoyatron in your PC using the provided USB cable, then select Arduino Uno in your board settings, and then select the Annoyatron in port settings. Okay, so that comes up on the screen. Yeah. Easy to go from there. Mm, yep. So Ariane and Alex, you spent a bit of time over the past few months exploring the Annoyatron. What do you think of it? Some of the pros I think of the Annoyatron is it has a lot of accessories that you can put onto it. You, you can put buzzers, you can put LEDs, you can put sensors. One con that I can list is that it is one of the hardest codes you can learn. C++ is an industry standard coding level. Ariane, take us through the setup of the Annoyatron. With the Annoyatron, you'll have a USB cable which can connect onto your computer. And you also have another cable to connect onto the brain board. Just plug it into your PC through your USB port and it should light up and start working. Now this annoying function is something you programmed it to do. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, not annoying at all. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's stop that. Thank you. Tell us how easy or difficult it was to make it that annoying. It was a pretty simple function for the Annoytron with the LED. We've just inputted some power functions where the LED would get power at one moment and then lose power, which makes it turn on and off. Okay, so you're programming the side and the sound. Yeah. The Annoyatron. Final thoughts, Alex? My final thoughts, I think this is great for the person who is more advanced in the coding. If you're just starting out or a beginner with programming, I would hold off with this device. Okay, so this is going to challenge the coders out there. Hmm. Thanks for the report, guys. If you're after a truly annoying product, you can get this on Edvi. I think we pretty much covered everything. I do too, because I learned a little bit about coding and a little bit about a brain board. Thanks for joining us in the lab with Annoyatron. Oh my gosh, thank goodness those interns have finished testing the Annoyatron. It is, in a word, annoying. 
Now, the team did let me out of the office a little <laughs> while ago, and I went and saw the Autonomous Vehicle Summit. So let's go and take a look into our students' autonomous future. With everything from autonomous vehicles, autonomous shuttles, there is so much to see and do here at the Australian Autonomous Vehicle Summit. So much inspiration for our students and a window into their future. Well, I'm already loving this autonomous bus. There is no driver, but what do our students think of an autonomous future? I, I really, really like technology. So being here is pretty amazing, to be honest. We've gone to the conference, we've asked questions, we've just gotten to know a lot about autonomous vehicles. What the driverless cars will look like and how they are being presented. We've seen a variety of different things like virtual reality, different vehicles used in different purposes. We've seen the race cars from University in Melbourne. I'm pretty excited because they're the way of the future. I reckon the, in the future, autonomous vehicles are going to be a very, very big part of how we get around. Um, but the other thing that's really scary is the safety. So knowing if we're going to be safe and if we're going to the right places. It's a pretty cool concept. And I honestly think I will be using autonomous vehicles in the future. I reckon we can build an autonomous vehicle. With the help of my fellow peers, I reckon we could, because you can't do it by yourself, you need to do it as a team. And when you do it as a team, it's more successful. We're going to hear from some industry experts to hear the skills our students are going to need for the future. And also, what an autonomous future is going to look like. The theme of this year's conference was Forging the Future and a big part of what we do and a part, big part of our ongoing strategy going forward is to engage with uh, young people. Everyone from all sorts of industries, we've got the manufacturers, we've got government and we've got researchers like myself um, and we've come together to talk about automated vehicles and what the future is going to look like and what we need to do to get there. Look, I think uh, for teachers thinking about this kind of stuff, it's trying to help their students imagine the future. Oh, there are so many different roles which are required to build a future. Writing the code, um, creating the software, creating the automation, but just as importantly, there'll be jobs about um, how you relate to each other, the customer service side of things. And we are primarily hiring, you know, talented young people that works in engineering, mechatronics, robotics, software, but that wants to uh, co-write what's going to be the futures, uh, the story of the futures for new mobility moving forward. Okay, so we've heard from students, we've heard from industry experts, but what do teachers think about how they're going to prepare our students for an autonomous future? Preparing students is easy, it's just giving them opportunity and building their confidence so that when things go wrong, it's okay. Some of the skills I think the students need to be able to have is they need to be able to sort of follow the principles of design thinking. The kids are really sort of getting their head around what can we do for the future and how, how we can do it better. In robotics we like to teach the kids to fail fast and problem solving I think is the biggest one. Resilience in working with things when they go wrong. I want them to come in with confidence and, and enjoy having things go wrong and knowing how to fix them and asking questions. Oh my gosh, what an amazing day we've had here with students, with teachers and with industry experts. I'm about to jump on my ride home, an autonomous bus. But don't forget, start your students' journey to the future tomorrow. Get them innovating and creating with autonomous robots like the LEGO EV3, like the Dash, and you can find loads of resources on the T4L website or in the STEM.T4L Learning Library. Start your students' journey tomorrow. One of the greatest things about working at T4L is meeting the inspirational people that we do, um, going to some incredible schools and pushing ourselves outside of our comfort zone. I think you'll agree that this next story with Sarah Connolly will make you feel the same way. There's a little quote underneath Wilkenia Tourism that says that we are the middle of nowhere but the centre of everything. My name's Sarah. I'm the Acting Primary Deputy Principal of Wilcannia Central School. So we are two hours east of Broken Hill, which is about an 11 hour drive from Sydney. 
So I'm from Sydney originally, so if you're driving from that direction, from Dubbo, um, you actually come over the river before you enter town. So it's really cool because you sort of look up and down um, and see that space. There's so much history, a white Australia history and an Aboriginal history in this place. And it's a really interesting sort of coming together. And I think you see that as you roll into town, even the first glimpse. So it's a really fascinating place once you start to dig underneath the surface. That you talk to anyone in community, they want our kids to learn. They want our kids to have the opportunities that kids in any school have. They want their kids to be going to school and to find a passion for learning. So one of the best things that I've found um, since being out here is the professional opportunities that have been opened for me. I was lucky enough to attend Edutech and just had the most amazing time listening to keynote speakers and then exploring through the convention. And I heard Michelle Michaels as part of a panel discussion and she said something that really resonated with me. She said that right now in the department we have the right people in the jobs who want to listen to you teachers and principals and they want to hear from us. And so I sort of stalked her around this T4L setup and I introduced myself when she had a moment and it just started from a conversation and then thinking about, well, hang on, let's make this possible because there was interest in people who were keen to continue the conversation, I suppose. So the last two days have provided opportunities for our students and our teachers to be engaged in learning, having new experiences. It's been really exciting to see the student engagement but also the teacher engagement and the conversations I've had with staff who've been able to breathe a little easier over the last few days and have had that room to go, oh, I can see what that's doing for X, Y, Z, whichever student it is, and then have a conversation with a professional and a colleague about, well, the way I could integrate that into my planning is, there's been so many ideas flying around from preschool right up into secondary. Um, so it's just the excitement for learning, I think, is the most important thing over the last two days. It's always exciting when you have optional professional learning and you have this massive team that arrives to do it. I'd just like to say thank you. Um, it's been such an amazing few days and so inspiring and invigorating for our staff. I think it's also, for our students, it's people coming out and showing that they care and it's people coming out that make them feel like they have something to say, that they are valued and that they can play with the same technologies and use it and think in the same way that kids anywhere else can. That's what meaningful experiences and opportunities like this say. Here's a team that have come all the way from Sydney because they've heard you are the best kids in the far west and they want to work with you. And all of the um, T4L team have made our kids feel like that and feel supported. And, and there's been this fun, this sense of fun that's come with all of the activities and all of the presenters' interactions with the kids. Um, and so, yeah, I just want to say thank you, but it's something that is so invaluable for us and has sparked a conversation that's going to continue. So it's really exciting. There are so many inspirational teachers out there and we are so lucky as a team to be able to bump into them every day. Thank you so much, Sarah, for sharing your story. Now, I know every one of you thinks technology is pretty darn amazing, but in the next story, you're going to see how it can change someone's life. I think people quite often get confused between equity and equality and I think people have a sense that in order for things to be equitable, they need to be the same. Um, I'm a huge advocate of the fact that every student is different. For Cal, the biggest challenge that we face is for him individually, his intellectual capacity is the complete opposite of his physical ability. I Rid? Mm. You want to get rid of him? Can you get rid of him? The type of cerebral palsy that Cal has means that his body's continually moving. So when he tries to directly point to something, his brain knows what he wants to point to and has the intention to move his arm to that spot, but he'll quite often miss or overshoot. So he can't be as precise as he'd like to be. So Microsoft has a, a mission to empower every person on the planet to achieve more. Uh, and I think we do that through both our software and hardware. So whether it is looking at the immersive reader that's built into uh, Office, whether it's looking at the setup of a Windows device, so that could support a student uh, who has limited mobility or perhaps vision impairment. 
um, or whether it's actually looking at a physical device like the Xbox adaptive controller, uh, where it can be customized to a student's physical needs. So both software and hardware, we're working every day to make sure they empower um, everyone across the world to achieve more. The controllers, the 3D printers, the and even just the simple coloration of everything, that it will be the ability of, of having him design things that make his life better for him. For us, technology, it's made things possible that otherwise would not have been. So aside from accessing the curriculum, um, he's been able to just play. And yes, it's on a screen, but he can do yeah. many different things. He can send text messages and contact family. He can um, draw pictures. He can create music, um, uh, anything. We were going out for dinner one night and I'd asked him what he wanted to have when, as we were on our way there in the car and next minute my phone vibrated and I had a message with the restaurant menu <laughs> telling, me, telling me what he could have. He used to tell everybody he met, I've, I've got, I'm Cal, I've got CP and I'm smart. I'm like, mate, there's so many more interesting things about you than that. He's got the knowledge that he has because he's worked hard and that, you know, we don't want him to take it for granted and just think that well, I know everything, I can't learn anything more. We really want to push that point of being a lifelong learner and continue to develop his skills all the time. You must be sitting in a brain that is just so frustrated with, put that damn hand there. <laughs> you know what you want to do, but your body's not reacting to you. Why can't we have something that makes it easy for him to do things? Hopefully what we will end up with is that customization with the little tools that we're playing with at the moment, because you are experimenting the whole time and hopefully that is going to make such a difference to his life. Yeah, it's absolutely opened up a whole world. So in reality, I guess he's really just learning like any other kid. If that's not a reason to get out of bed, have a great day at work and keep pushing forward with tech, I don't know what is. Oh my gosh, <laughs> we have been everywhere. We have done just about everything and we've had a blast. Have you had a blast with tech? I've had a blast. I just want to make sure that you're not doing any other events during your holidays and you're going to have some downtime. Hello, I'm going to be on LinkedIn Learning. <laughs> learning so much is all I can tell you. I know, I know. Now make sure, Yvette, I really want to come back next year, do yeah, you? Me too. You need to like our YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe, and of course, I want to see you guys in real life. I know. So we've got our calendar going out soon. Make sure you lock those dates in. Lock in your professional learning. Is there anything else I need well, to know? Well, we want you to stay social over the break. We'll be on Twitter. We're now on the other one that I can't Instagram. forget. Instagram! Holiday reading sorted with magazine.t4l. Uh, we've got quite a few issues out now and we want your feedback. We hope you enjoy it. Uh, let oh, us know your thoughts. I've already downloaded them all, Yvette. I am totally ready to go. And don't forget Yammer. Very and pumping platform, that one. Um, we want to hear from you over the break. Share resources with us. Tell us what you're thinking. What do you envisage for this show next year? And tell us the tech you're loving. But guess what? The sun's out. It's time to go and enjoy summer. Sun's out. Thanks, everyone, for an amazing 2019. Yeah. Thanks, Yvette. Thanks, Joe. It's been great. We'll see you next year.